Hello. It just came to me that if we can understand how consciousness evolves, then actually we don't need to understand anything else. Because from it will emerge everything that we need to know and live. And uh, its simplicity, it, it, it so excited me that I had to come and sit down and tell you about it. Now, it is true that what we've been told about consciousness is not true. It took me a long time. I, I was always fascinated by psychology most of my life. But then I saw how little we know about what consciousness is. First of all, we've been told by psychology that consciousness emerges from the brain. No way. Another thing is that consciousness started with the Big Bang. Well, if it started with the Big Bang, then uh, what was before the Big Bang that started it? <laughs> okay, no. Consciousness has no causality. Consciousness has no beginning. Consciousness has no time or space. Consciousness is. And there isn't anyone living now, today, who knows what consciousness is. But then we also know that we are it itself. Consciousness is all that there is. There is nothing else. And uh, the beauty of consciousness we will recognize as we go on. When I began to understand consciousness, and uh, the first, it, it happened when I experienced the light in my NDE experience in the hospital. <clears throat> now, let's go into consciousness. There was a, a book, a best-selling book written by David uh, Hawkins, and it was titled Force Versus Power, that consciousness evolves by stages, and we don't understand these stages until we reach the midpoint. So the, the genius of Hawkins, Dr. Hawkins, was that he calibrated consciousness from one to 1,000, which meant that um, as we go through stages from one to 1,000, um, we start to evolve in our understanding, but in our heart how it, it happens. Con uh, consciousness evolves. First of all, it starts as a force. That force is known as survival instinct. And we also know it as an ego. And uh, this, this force is uh, the need to survive, the fear of death, um, the need to win, the need to compete, uh, a feeling of separation, it brings stress, it brings uh, the need to feel important, to feel loved, and so on and on. This is a force. This force brings our, uh, unfortunately, it brings, well, not unfortunate, it just, it just happens, okay, because it creates an ego that just wants to be separate. And it thinks that consciousness or uh, the ego thinks that it is a personal self, which is separate from others. Okay, this is inevitable. This is what the ego is. And this is how uh, so much suffering happens in the world. It is inevitable. But we're also going to understand that how consciousness itself is perfect, unconditional love. And once we begin to grasp that, even minutely, that will alter our life completely. Because force wants us to be um, in control. Uh, it, it, it wants us to make our life work not realizing there's no such thing as my life, there's only life. 
you see. And, and so we do, we do not see the wholeness. We see separation, we see, we see the smallness of self. And of course, we suffer. Now, uh, David Hawkins said that when we uh, come to a point of 500 calibration, which is done by muscle testing, but we won't be going into that because just we don't have the time. I'm trying to make this as brief as possible, just to tell you how consciousness more or less evolves. He said that when we reach the 500, we begin to understand that life has no causality, which is consciousness. Imagine, we always believe by cause, you see. And, uh, but it's causeless, it always was. Also, another thing that happens too, as we start to evolve, is that we believe we go from one reincarnation into another, one lifetime after another. And although this can be verified through stories, uh, we can even remember past lives, many of us do, yet nothing takes place. <clears throat> Let me explain. For first of all, consciousness has no time. It is absolutely timeless. It just is. And because it just is, anything that seemed to have happened in the past or going to happen in the future, again, doesn't really exist because it is all happening now. Can the mind understand that? No. Because our mind, which is a force, which the course uh, incidentally, the, the, the Course in Miracles um, divides mind into two minds. The false mind, which is the conditioned mind, and the real mind, or the, or the, uh, the true mind, the right mind, calls it, is the infinite mind. The infinite mind of consciousness. Consciousness, I, I spell it with a capital C. Okay. Now, consciousness has two very important drives that are natural in it. And we don't understand that until we reach a calibration of 450 to 500. Uh, you see, initially, if we are in the 400 area of calibration, according to David Hawkins, we still believe in causality. We still believe that consciousness came into being. We still believe that it had a cause. It is only when we reach 500 or more, which is the midpoint, that we start to understand there is no causality to consciousness. The mind can grasp that. It just is. It was uh, Plato who made this statement, he says, you can understand, you, you, you come to uh, know the truth when you can tell the difference between that which is and never becomes and that which becomes and never is. Once we know the difference between the two, then we start to grasp what consciousness is, <clears throat> which is the truth. Now, consciousness has two qualities that are immense. One, it is self-recognizing. Two, it is self-organizing. Now, self-recognizing means this. If I were to ask you, how do you know you exist? And you'll say, well, of course I do. Well, okay, how do you know? And you'll say, because I'm aware I exist. Ah, aware. You see, you're aware that you exist. Awareness is consciousness. Consciousness recognizing itself. How does it organize itself? And this is the most beautiful part. When I saw that clearly in the light, when, I, when that came to me, I fell in love with consciousness, with the light of being, which I call Holy Spirit. It is self-organizing because 
when you start to see that consciousness is all that there is, call it source, call it God, call it truth, it doesn't matter. It is all that there is. When you see that, then you also know that you are it. <clears throat> and when you know that you are it, you no longer fight to be right. You no longer try to control your life. You no longer try to um, manipulate your life. And you realize there is no life, my life, there is only life. You begin to think and feel holistically. You begin to feel that you are being lived. In fact, you are a human being, being, playing the human role. Being, being lived. Wow. Well, when you start seeing this, feeling this in your heart, then you know that one thing, only one thing works, and that is love. Love is the only thing that works. When you realize that and you live from it, then you'll be taken care of. When you're hungry, the food is there. When you need money, the money will be there. When you need to sleep, the, the, the bed or whatever will be there. The shelter will be there. In other words, you'll be taken care of because your trust, your complete surrender to the Holy Spirit, to that which is, which is the source itself, the beingness itself, and it's not a religion. It just is all that there is. Once you see that and you trust it, now that is what peace is, that is what enlightenment is, that is what happiness is, that is what peace is, that is what unending joy is. It is that trust. <clears throat> so we go from force to power. This is how the evolution works. Force, I repeat, is what causes all the suffering in the world, which is our ego, thinking that we are separate from the source, which is impossible, but we do not see this impossibility. We just, this, this, this instinct to survive, to, to live my life <clears throat> instead of life. I am life. And so it goes from, according to uh, David Hawkins, it goes from 1 to 1,000. When you pass the 500 part, let's say close to 600 calibration, you'll begin to understand things you never understood before, that you are being lived. And now is all that we'll ever have, but now has no beginning or end, because now and consciousness are one, you see? <clears throat> and then the, the, the final one, you will see that love, unconditional love, is the very nature of consciousness. <clears throat> how glorious, how beautiful that is. So you will see, as The Course of Miracles tells us, that our work is to forgive, all the time forgive, because the pain and the anxiety and the stress and the fears that go through you are simply nothing more than a call for love. A child crying for love, you see. So when you see that, you don't go to a Someone to take care of you gives you drugs to, to, to get rid of the symptoms of depression or whatever. No, 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 no. You just see it as a lesson to be learned. When fear occurs, you look at fear directly. And as you look at it directly, you'll see that it's nothing more than a call for love, a need for love. And so you'll see the transference from force to power. And power is infinite, and it is who you are. So start out by always remembering to forgive. Forgive every guilt you fear. Forgive every single negative thought. 
Forgiveness does not mean I forgive. Forgiveness, this is the paradox, forgiveness is seeing that there is nothing to forgive. It is just something I need to learn. If I am stressed, if I'm suffering, if I have so-called problem, it means that there is a lesson I haven't learned yet. Thank you. You see? And now I look at it. What is it that I need to learn? What is it that I need to see? That there's only one problem. Separation from source. Separation from that which is. And so, the moment I see that, that's all it takes. That's all it takes to transform fear into love. It is that clarity, that beauty. Thank you for listening. Thank you.